This tutorial is about the Dimension tool in Adobe Illustrator. This tool was introduced in Illustrator 2024, and it's improved since its first iteration. And I want to show you an overview of how it works and what it does. And then I'll show you how the settings work so you know what this tool can do and what it doesn't do. So first, to dimension this package design, I'm going to click on the Dimension tool in the toolbar and this gives me a taskbar with three tools, linear, angular, and radial dimension, plus a settings icon. Let's zoom in to this design, and then to place a dimension, just hover, and you'll see how it's automatically measuring from edge to edge. And then I click and drag out to place a dimension. Now I'm going over to the layers panel, and we can see Illustrator has automatically generated a layer for us called dimensions and the dimension is placed here. So any dimensions we create in this document will wind up on this layer. What's special about these dimensions is that they are live and updating. So let me get the dimension tool and place another dimension. I'll do one here on this side. Then I'll get my selection tool and resize this rectangle and we can see those dimensions update as I do that. Now it's possible to inadvertently expand a dimension. If you take the selection tool and you try to move a dimension like that, you'll see it gets expanded. So now this dimension is no longer live and it won't update as I scale this rectangle here. Let me undo that. And instead, if you need to reposition one of the dimensions, use the dimension tool for that. And that way it will remain live and continue to update. Now I'm going to turn off the background art for this package design. And what we've been seeing so far are these automatically aligned dimensions. You can see the pink highlighting as I hover and we're getting a dimension that goes from one corner point to the other automatically. But in a case like this, Maybe I just want the package from here to here, just that one panel, but automatically the dimension wants to go from one corner point to the other, as we can see here. I'll undo that. So to place one manually, you just click, and then I'm gonna hold shift to make this straight and click a second time, and then pull away and click again. So that's how you create a manually placed dimension, just by clicking from one point to the other. You can also get the dimensions of the whole object vertically and horizontally by holding down Option or Alt. So I'm gonna hold down Option or Alt and click on this edge here. And now we can see those dimensions that span the whole package design. And once again, if you wanna move them, then you need to just use the dimension tool to do that and I'll move the one down here just a little bit away from that package design. So we're starting to stack up a bunch of dimensions here. And I just wanna show you that if I get the rectangle tool and draw a rectangle, it's actually possible to draw other objects on this layer. So it's not gonna do any harm to the existing dimensions, but it might make your file a little disorganized. So just be aware of what layer you're creating new art on. I'm going to move that rectangle down to another layer. Now let's take a look at the settings. I'll open up the options by clicking on the gear icon and now we're in the dimension tool options dialog. Most of the settings here are about styling. So we have line weights, arrowheads, type style, and color. At the top, we have the unit of measure for the dimensions, the amount of precision that you want in your dimensions, so up to three decimal points, or in the case of feet and inches, we can be as precise as a quarter of an inch. Now these won't be precise enough for a lot of tasks. And so if you want more precision, let Adobe know, and maybe we'll see more options in this menu. And then finally, we have a scaling ratio. And there's a bunch of presets here, but at the very bottom, you can click to create a custom scale. I'll cancel that. The way I like to look at this dialog is this creates the settings for the next dimension that you plot. This is not a document wide setting. I'm going to cancel out of here and I'll explain this. 
each dimension here can be selected and we can see its individual settings in the properties panel. So again, at the top, we're seeing for that one dimension, the unit of measure, the level of precision, and all of these styling options. But at the bottom, we have some really important buttons here. One apply to all can transfer the styling of this dimension to all the other dimensions in your document. Then we have set as default, which will send the settings of the selected object back to that tool options panel we just looked at. So let's say I make a change to this dimension right here because I want to update the styling in this document. So I'm just going to make an obvious change with bold. I'll make this a very different color and I'll increase the size of the type. Now, when I click the apply to all button, we can see the dimensions update across the document. But notice if I go over back to the gear icon, I still have my old settings here. Let me click cancel. So any new dimensions I create will be in that old setting. And so if we want to update the default setting in the tool dialog, we need to select a dimension and then come to this button set as default. And now when I open the tool options, we can see the setting has updated here and I'll click save. So now we know how to update the styling across the document and we know how to use a dimension to update the default in the dimension tool options dialog. And also we have a reset button here so we can reset to a simple black style. So that's the reset button. I'm going to go back and set the green and red style as the default. Clicking save. So let's see what happens when we go to another document. So over here, I have a studio plan where I'm planning out my furniture and I'm working on a one inch equals one foot scale. So it's a one to 12 scale. What happens when I start to dimension in this document? Notice that the default setting that's in the tool options dialog is now applied to the next dimension you create regardless of the document you're in. And so is the old scaling. So existing dimensions are one to 12 and the new dimension is one to one. So if I say, okay, I want to use this style for this document and I come over to the properties panel and I click apply to all, we will see the styling of that dimension update, but not the scaling. And notice if I look at the top of the properties panel here, we have units precision, but we don't have the scaling for this document. So in a case like this, when you're moving between documents with different scalings, we're going to need to change that over here. Now I have, remember the default style from the last document. This is what was confusing to me because there's not sort of an intrinsic document setting here or a panel where we can do that. We're really only working with this panel that, like I said, governs the settings for the next dimension you create. Let me cancel this. So what I need to do to start working in this totally different document is I need to select a dimension, then set it as the default, then go over to the tool options, go to the scaling and change the scaling here. So I'm going to go down to custom. I'm going to make this a one to 12. So that's one inch equals 12 inches or one inch equals a foot and click OK. Then I'll save this. So now I've got all the styling settings and I've got the scaling as my default. So if I dimension this side of the work table, it's correct, six feet. So I can't update any misscaled dimensions. I really just need to delete those and start over and maybe move this stool out of the way. It's getting a little crowded there. All right, so I hope that that makes sense to you. I think this is what threw me off in the beginning, but once I realized that 
we don't have a document setting, but as long as you have a dimension that you like the style of, you can use it to update the tool options dialog and work across documents. And as long as you know that you can't globally update the scaling of a document, but you actually need to set the scaling in the tool options dialog and then start creating new dimensions if that's what you need to do. Now that we've thoroughly looked at the settings, I'll go back to the package design and I'll give you some tips for working with the angular dimension and the radial dimension. First, I need to go back to the settings, set this as the default, then go to the tool options and change the scaling here to one to one. With the angular dimension tool, I can come to a corner point here and click and drag to create an angular dimension. But if I don't have a corner point, if I just have lines that are intersecting, then I'll be doing a click by click in order to get that angular dimension. I can also click and click. And if I drag in one direction, I get that inner angle and I drag in the other direction, I get the outer angle. I'll undo that. And now if you ever click and click and you don't get the dimension, then check to make sure that your lines are actually intersecting. This can happen a lot in Illustrator when that stroke weight makes it look like they're touching, but they really aren't. So now if I update that and zoom back out again, get the angular dimension tool, click and click, and now that dimension is working. Now let's look at the radial dimension. With the radial dimension tool, you can hover over the circumference and then click and drag out to get a radius. I'll undo that or hover over the circumference and click and drag in to get the diameter. Now this tool only works on perfect circles. It doesn't work on ellipses and it will work on an arc, but that arc has to have a constant radius, like part of a perfect circle. All right, so we've looked at every part of the new dimension tool in Illustrator, and we've looked closely at the settings. And I hope this helped you work more efficiently with this tool. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Adobe Illustrator here on YouTube and in my online learning community. Find out more at my website, lauracoylecreative.com, and be sure to join my email list. You'll receive a welcome gift and helpful Illustrator tips delivered right to your inbox. And thanks for watching.